So our lesson for 3.5 today, we're going to talk about overlapping triangles. So we're actually not going to do any new theorems or anything like that today. We're just going to start looking at pictures that look a little bit more complicated and making sure we know how to use all of the theorems that we've had so far in these more complex situations. So that's just our job for today is the overlapping triangles. So for our warm up, um, all I want you to do is look at that picture and see how many triangles you can find. I will give you a hint. There are more than four. Why don't you pause your video and look for them? All right, so it is a little tricky because it starts to get overlapping and, uh, and it, it's hard to keep your brain straight, but let's start counting them. So obviously we have our first four, right? One, uh, I'll do these guys in pen. There's one, two, three, four, right? The very four, four very obvious ones. Okay, but now there's more than that. There are ones that are overlapping. So maybe you could see this triangle that's kind of overlapping up at the top. There's number five. And then we could also have overlapping at the top up on this side. There's number six. Now we could have ones that are overlapping down at the bottom. H, there's number seven. All this over highlighting and overlapping is getting hard to read, but and then we could do overlapping down here at the bottom, and here is eight. Hopefully, you could see me do that. There's eight, right? So we have the four obvious ones, but then we had overlapping at the top, five and six, and we had overlapping at the bottom, seven and eight. So there are actually eight triangles in this picture. So what you need to do is just train your brain to start looking for all of those possibilities and not just those very obvious triangles that bounce out to you right away. That's going to be our job today. So we're going to kind of walk our way through that. So here's another picture. Now hopefully you're seeing those three very obvious triangles right away and then the big one, right? Um, but we want you to try and see the ones that are overlapping. So let's see if we can't uh, highlight. So if you saw as I was working through that last one, I highlighted the triangles as I was going, and it kind of helps your brain see it. But sometimes just highlighting it isn't enough, and some people need uh, to actually redraw them, and that's perfectly fine. So let's see if we can find the overlapping triangles A, B, D, and A, E, C. So let's start with triangle A, B, D. Let me get a highlighter here ready to go. So a, triangle A, B, D is this triangle right here, right? Now it does say to redraw it if that helps you. And so we're gonna practice that and then you can determine which method is a method that would help you when you're doing your proof. So that mean, just means I'm gonna draw it separate down here. Here's A, here's B, Here's D, okay? Now, I might even go so far as just put in point C there so that you know it's it exists, right? But I'm not gonna draw the line because then it'll get a little bit confusing. Okay, so then the other triangle that we were trying to find was triangle A, E, C. A, E, C. Okay, do you see that? So you have their two different triangles there. So now I'm going to redraw triangle AEC over here because it's to the right of it. Here's A, here's E, here's C. And now I'm just going to put that little point D right in the middle because that's how it is in the picture, but I'm not necessarily going to connect the dots. Now what we want to make sure we do is highlight anything that's overlapping, right? So CD in the original picture, you see how CD here is overlapping in the two triangles. So I just take my highlighter and highlight that part so that I, it bounces out in my brain like, hey, these guys are sharing this part of this triangle. So hopefully that kind of helps you kind of break down those confusing pictures. If it's hard to just look at it straight and find those two triangles, try highlighting. I highly recommend that you try highlighting. Uh, if that's still not enough, then just separate them out. Draw a picture where they're separate, okay? So let's try this one now. Again, more complicated of a picture. I would like to see if you could try to find two different sets 
of overlapping triangles. You know, use your highlighter or redraw them whichever way works for you. So go ahead and pause your video and see what you can do. Okay, when I look at this picture, my first set of uh, overlapping triangles that jumps out to me, and I'm gonna switch over to a different color here. The first set that jumps out to me is triangle RST is one of them. So if I was gonna redraw it, I would do this. R S T. And then the other overlapping triangle that looks similar to that is triangle R, or excuse me, U T S. Triangle. And see how I'm going to keep it facing the same direction here? U T S. And now, if you notice in the picture, they are overlapping here on that whole segment TS. This is the same segment for those two. So hopefully after thinking through like how we usually use that idea, like if I was going to prove those two triangles were congruent, I could use the reflexive property on that highlighted segment. That's what we want our brains to start recognizing. Now for me, when I see it in the actual original picture with the highlighting, that jumps out to me a little bit better than when I see them separated out. But it's easier to see the other sides and angles when they're separated out rather than in the picture. So it's a little give or take on the two different methods. So you decide what works best for you. Now that's only one pair of overlapping triangles, but there's actually another set of overlapping triangles. And I'm going to, let's see if we can dig those out now. Okay, so the second set that I see are up on top. So Q, R, T, up on top. See if I can draw this something similar. All right, here, okay. Q, R, T, and then our other one, boy, what color do I have left? Let's go with this color, would be Q, oops. Q, U, S. Hopefully you're seeing that. Mm -hmm. And we'll draw it separately over here. So this is Q, here's U, and here's S. Now what I would be careful with on this one, on what's actually overlapping, you kind of have to be careful. Yeah, Q, R is a section of Q, S, right? So you could, we could put like, oh, here's the point R, and there is part of that that's being shared, right? And then similarly, over on this other, the blue triangle, there is a point U here, and part of that is being shared. So we could highlight those parts. This is being, sh this is overlapping on that one, this is overlapping on this one, right? Uh, but we have to be careful because it's not a whole side that's overlapping. Instead, what I would probably point out is I see that this angle Q is in both of those triangles whole as it is. So I would say that that would be the part that I would mark as that they are shared, is this angle Q is the same angle in both of them, right? R, Q, U, R, Q, U is the same angle in both triangles. So just keep in mind, you know, you can use the reflexive property on angles or segments. So keep your eyes open for these on angles that they share as well as segments that they share. All right, that was really good practice in looking at those overlapping triangles. So now let's start seeing how we could use that in a proof setting. So before we do a full on proof, let's just look and see it on a, a proof type setup. So here in our picture that looks very familiar to you, hopefully just like the warm up. But now we're given that segment FG is congruent to segment GE. I believe that is a typo. I believe that's supposed to say FH. So sorry about that. Switch that up. Segment FH is congruent to segment GE. Okay, so FH is this one. GE is this one. Okay. And we're given angle HFG is congruent to angle EGF. HFG is this angle right up here. And angle E 
GF is this angle right up here. Okay, boy, now it says, which triangles do you have enough information to prove congruent? So I see that I have these long sides congruent, right? So these long sides need to be parts of the triangles. Now, notice I don't have the different parts of those sides, right? It's not this and this, it's the whole thing. So I'm kind of narrowing down those four very obvious triangles right now and saying, I probably don't have enough information for those because I am having long segments. So what I tend to do is I tend to just trace, pick a highlighter and trace along some of the, of the things that we know are congruent. So like, I know that this segment HF is congruent to something in the other triangle. Oh, and now I see this angle. So to make that angle, I have to go from here to here. Oh, and now I'm seeing a triangle that's jumping out at me, right? Okay, now I'm gonna pick my other color of highlighter and I'm gonna trace along the other one. So here was the other long segment that I knew. Oh, now I see this angle. So to make that angle, I would have to go from here on this way. Oh, and now I'm seeing this triangle jump out at me. Oh, okay, so I knew that this big long segment was congruent to this big long segment, right? And I have my angle in this one over here and I have my angle and this one over here. And I see that they're sharing a side, right? So I could always use the reflexive property for this side right here, FG. Now, if you're having a hard time really seeing that, this is when you would want to make sure that you redraw the triangles. So I'm gonna draw that first triangle that I saw, EFG, kind of looks like this, right? F, E, G. Okay, and I knew that I had this segment, I had this angle, and I just got this segment from the reflexive property. Okay, and then I had tr the other triangle. Whoa. was triangle FGH, right? Eh, see if I can draw this somewhat relating to the picture. You know, obviously I'm sure you could draw it better than I could. FGH, and we had this long segment we knew was congruent to the other long segment. We had this angle up here by angle F, and then we proved this side right there with the reflexive property. So do you see when you draw it separately, it does kind of jump out at you a little bit better on what method you would be using to prove those triangles congruent. So our first question asked, which two triangles do you have enough information to prove congruent? And the triangles that we saw were triangle FGE would be congruent to triangle. Now let's be careful on the order we say it. I said FGE, so I started, so this side would have to be GFH. Remember that order matters, and it's particularly tricky when you have these overlapping triangles. So FGE would be congruent to GFH, and the method we would use would be side, angle, side, right? And once you draw them separately, that kind of jumps out at you a little bit better than just highlighting in the picture. Now, there are more triangles in there, but we wouldn't have enough information to prove them congruent because I needed to have those two little angles in there, and these were the only triangles that had those two little angles as well as the long sides. All right, hopefully you're getting the idea of how you're gonna be using these overlapping triangles. So let's try an actual proof now. So in this proof, I'm gonna start off with our given. So number one was PW is congruent to TM. PW is here and TM is here, and it's crucial that you mark your picture as you go. So in step number two, my second given is that segment PM is congruent to segment TW. Given, let's mark that. T, uh, a PM, excuse me, okay, this long one here is congruent to TW, this long one here. And our job is to prove that angle P up here, oops, 
is congruent to angle T up here. That's what we're going to try and prove, right? So I need to have some triangles that are congruent so that I can use a CPCTC idea to get there. All right, so now I'm trying to find the triangles that contain those long sides and the two short sides, and if possible, contain angle P and angle T so I could use CPCTC. So let's see, I'm gonna start highlighting some triangles. So if I follow along this long side WT, I'm hoping that angle T is gonna be in the mix, but I see the next side that I know I have congruent is this segment here. So to make that into a triangle, I would go right down there. And if we need to redraw it to help us see it better, that's awesome, let's do that. Looks something like this, right? T, M, W. And in that green triangle, I have my long side congruent and I have this short side congruent. Okay, now let's look for the other one. Here I have my long side, P, M, M, P. And then I see I want that angle, but the other side I also know is right here. To make that into a triangle, then I would connect down at the bottom. So I, if I was going to draw that out, I would look something like this. I have P, W, M, and I knew this long side was congruent to the other one, and I have this short side up here, right? Now, as I was highlighting in that picture, ooh, it jumped out at me that I definitely have a reflexive property down here at the bottom. See how it's double highlighted? So I know that WM uh, is congruent. Well, here, let's do this. Let's give it three, three lines. There we go. WM is congruent to WM, right? Those were overlapping in our picture, so I would want to just make sure that I recognize that those were the ones that were overlapping. So step three would be WM is congruent to WM using the reflexive property. Boy, and now when I see my separated pictures like that, I notice I have those triangles congruent. I'm ready to go. So step four would be triangle P, W, M is congruent to triangle. Let's be careful on the order now. P, W, M. I went down the side and then across the bottom. So T, M, W would have to be the order for that one. And the reason would be side, side, side. And again, I could double check my steps to make sure they were actually all side congruent steps. All three of them were segments. So one, two, three in my parentheses. All right, I have my triangles congruent. So now I'm trying to get to the angle P is congruent to angle T, which I can definitely do using CPCTC. So step five, angle P congruent to angle T. And the reason, when we're writing it out in words, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I have proven it using those overlapping triangles. But you see how the actual proof, the actual reasons and theorems we're using are exactly the same as the ones we've been doing so far. Now it's just that instead of having the pictures separated out, sometimes they're going to be overlapping. All right, so just to wrap up what we learned today, to make it easier to identify those overlapping triangles, try highlighting them in different colors. And if that doesn't work, or maybe you need more, you're gonna just try redrawing them and make sure to identify any of those shared sides or angles. Or maybe you wanna do both because they both help you in different ways. So I think anything you can do to try and identify those a little bit better will be very important to help your brain. And I highly recommend using color.